Hello and welcome to this session everyone. My name is Yogesh Mehta. In this quick session, we're going to talk about Jenkins Backup and Tree Store. Backing up data, that's very crucial to any business and Jenkins is not an exception. If you have right backups in place, uh, it gives you peace of mind in case of any recovery needed to tackle any unexpected situation like uh, your data center outage, Jenkins system failures or accidental deletion of data. There are multiple methods to back up the Jenkins configuration and they are you can use thin backup or backup plugin. You can use a Git repository. You can push your configuration file to Git repo in your setup. And uh, in case you need to restore something, you can uh, do the Git pull. You can manually back up the Jenkins configuration file. Let's say you can uh, use tar command to create a tarball of all configuration files or you can schedule a shell script using Chrome, which will take backup of your configuration. The easiest approach which I found is to use the Jenkins plugin for the backup. In this quick demo, we are going to install thin backup plugin and configure the backups and test a restore. Installation of a thin backup plugin is very easy. You just need to log into Jenkins UI, then go to manage Jenkins, then manage plugin, click on available and select thin backup plugin and uh, you can go with install without restart what it means once installation is finished it, it will not install jenkins so that's good because thin backup plugin installation don't need jenkins to be restarted you can see on screen i'm creating a directory called uh, slash app slash jenkins underscore backup this directory will serve as backup location for all the backups which this particular thin backup plugin is going to take you can see on screen I'm changing the ownership to Jenkins and uh, group ownership to Jenkins too for this particular backup directory. Why I'm doing that? Because when backup is taken, it will be taken by Jenkins user. So Jenkins user need uh, right access to this particular directory. Again, now uh, when you want to do restore, Jenkins user need to read the data. So you can understand that's the reason I'm changing the ownerships. Another thing which is very important uh, that uh, whatever directory is going to serve as backup directory location that need to be under your backup or snapshot policies. In case your whole system crashes, let's take that scenario and you want to make uh, some different server as your Jenkins master. In that case, uh, you can restore the data from backup on the target machine. Then using Jenkins thin backup plugin, you can restore the configuration on new server and uh, get it production ready. So next thing, uh, once installation of thin backup plugin is done, we have to do settings of thin backup uh, plugin. So you can navigate through manage Jenkins thin backup and setting. You can see on screen, this is sample. Here uh, I have added some dummy configuration. I will give you live demo when I'm configuring or performing the settings of this particular plugin to perform backup now that's very easy manage Jenkins thin backup backup now so if you do that that is going to be ad hoc backup because it is not scheduled we are taking the backup on ad hoc basis but once with schedule it will automatically take backup and ever you specify the schedule restoring backup so restoring is always ad hoc you can't uh, and it not make sense to restore with the schedule job because you have to perform a lot of settings and no one wants to restore until there are some issues uh, with the configuration. Restoration is very simple. Manage Jenkins, thin backup, then restore. Once data is restored, you can perform your sanity, whether all data is available, your Jenkins is working as expected. That's it. So guys, let me give you a quick demo of this particular plugin and uh, uh, we will do a backup and a test restore. So first thing I'm doing, I'm going to create a directory called apps backup. Sorry, it's apps Jenkins backup. And changing honor to Jenkins Jenkins. particular directory so this part is done so let's log into Jenkins UI now so I am on Jenkins UI now so first thing I have to do I have to click on Jenkins 
then click on manage jenkins and here option is manage plugins here so once you go there uh, there is option available available meaning the plugins which are available but not installed on your machine so here you can filter it so plugin name is thin backup you can see this plugin appeared with version number 1.9 so we are going to install this particular plugin i have selected the plugin and clicking on install without restart if you click download now and uh, do after restart so that's something it will install uh, after the restart so that's I don't want as I mentioned this plugin don't need Jenkins to be restarted you can see thin backup plugin installation is successful my machine is already connected to internet so it got this plugin downloaded from Jenkins repository okay guys uh, till this time we are good we have installed Jenkins plugin so let's perform setting of this particular Jenkins thin backup plugin to perform settings click on Jenkins manage and gains and here you can see new option called thin backup click here okay first thing we have to perform settings click on settings in settings we are going to tell which is going to be our backup directory so in our case apps jenkins underscore backup that's good backup schedule so if you don't know which format uh, this particular plugin accept the data you can click here this is help it will show you okay this is the format so i'm selecting this sample timings once you select that it is saying okay invalid cron schedule unexpected end of file what it means there are wild spaces you can see these are spaces that's the reason so let me get rid of the spaces okay it looks good now but now we got warning so it is suggesting that uh, instead of uh, following zero you can put h h mean hour which will be more suitable so let's go with that one okay so this is good and when differential backup need to perform perform differential mean uh, the difference of data between the full backup and the next ones so i'm saying do it at uh, 15. okay number of backup sets you want to copy i'm saying keep three it means it will keep three copies of backup let's say you, your schedule is to take backup on weekly basis for example it will keep uh, backup copies of previous two weeks and the latest one three copies if you want to exclude any file yes uh, i want to exclude log file so log file is this one so if you follow this one or you want to avoid any other file syntax any file name pattern you can uh, put it here it will avoid uh, those files in the backup Next config is wait until Jenkins is idle to perform a backup. What it means uh, if Jenkins is uh, loaded means some jobs are running on Jenkins server at that time don't kick off backup. Wait Jenkins to be uh, to be idle still. Otherwise, if Jenkins is not idle after 120 minutes, put Jenkins into quiet mode, which we don't want. So I'm unselecting and checking this option. So here I'm selecting backup build results. That's fine. Even I don't need build results because uh, uh, that's fine. Again, uh, this is demo only. You can go with settings as per your setup requirement. Here I'm selecting I want to backup uh, plugin archives. I want to move old backup files to zip file. I want to backup user content folder. I want to backup, uh, uh, let's say, next build number five for example let's a uh, sample only again uh, what it means backup additional file let's say there are some files you can put regular expression like uh, some file which code this particular keyword uh, let's say test one two three backup those files so if you have some data clean up differential backup if there is already a differential backup whether you want to clean up uh, automatically or not so you can select this option uh what else what else yeah that's it so let's save the setting so settings are done guys so let me show you here this particular directory will be empty as of now you can see no data so first thing which we have to do now we have to i have clicked backup now so once i click backup now it is going to take backup as ad hoc backup why i'm using word ad hoc backup because uh, it is not uh, 
taken as per schedules. Schedule is different, but for this particular demo, I have taken backup manually. Otherwise, next time automatically as per schedule, backups will be taken. Okay, so I click backup now. Let's see whether it got any backup or not. You can see, guys, full backup. Today's date, 4:28 is the time. So backup is taken. Honor is Jenkins Jenkins. So that's good. Uh, what happens? If you click backup now again then it is going to create another copy of backup so I click backup now again let's see what's the directory status now you can see it created a zip file for the older backup one as we selected in setting move the old backup as zip file and this is a new one at 429 so we have selected max number of copies to three so this is the first copy this is the second it can create one more copy all old copies will be removed apart from last three copies so i believe you understand uh, what we mean by number of uh, data sets backup data sets so guys backup looks good so let's create a scenario now like we are going to restore some files for restoration to work i'm going to delete some data in my server apps jenkins is the directory which got uh, jenkins home so i'm going to delete let's say i will delete uh, this particular plugin file i have deleted this plugin file from my jenkins home so let's make sure this file is deleted sorry for typos so this file is deleted right so let's do a restore To do a restore, click on restore. It will prompt uh, which particular backup you want to use for restoration purposes. So there are two copies. I am selecting restore from 428.1. This is a zip file currently, right? So Jenkins will automatically unzip that file and restore the file which is missing. And click on restore. You can see it's working here. Processing. Okay, looks like it finished because we are restoring single file only. So let's check now. So guys, you can see this file is restored. The file is available. So that's the way restores work. Another thing which I mentioned in theory session, make sure this particular directory, which is serving as Jenkins backup location, is under your backup policies or snapshot policies. Let me clear that scenario. Let's say this particular Jenkins master server crashes. You are not able to recover the server at all. You have built a new server. On that server, you can restore this particular directory. From this directory, you can like restore the configuration. Let me show you content of this particular directory, which is full backup to give you idea. If you see all config files, all plugins are copied, all jobs, which we configured are copied and uh, the node monitors, plugins, user contents. So whatever options you select, all backup will be done and you can restore whatever you want. So thank you guys. Uh, that's it in this session. If you have any query, any suggestion, just leave a comment on my YouTube channel. If you want uh, me to record some particular videos on particular topic, just uh, leave a comment on my youtube channel i will try to do my best thanks guys